You are looking right now at a sheep heart, which is a great model organ for a human heart because like all mammalian hearts, the sheep heart has four chambers. And even though it is significantly smaller than a human's heart, the sheep heart will have the same external and internal anatomy as a human heart does. Right away, you should be able to see that the heart itself is made of two main types of tissue. This grayish brown tissue that you see here is muscle. And if you think back to conversations on histology, there are three types of muscle that make up your body. This is not skeletal muscle because skeletal muscle attaches to bones and sometimes the skin. This is not smooth muscle because smooth muscle is usually inside our bladder in our reproductive organs and in our digestive tract and in our blood vessels. But instead, this is a special type of muscle tissue that is exclusively found in the heart known as cardiac muscle. The other major tissue that you're gonna see on the heart is this white blobby tissue up here. And this is fat tissue, which you might remember is more scientifically called adipose tissue. Another feature to notice on the heart are almost like these river delta branches coming down the heart. And these are actually blood vessels embedded inside that adipose tissue. These are a special type of blood vessel known as coronary arteries. And their responsibility is to deliver blood to the heart itself. Like all organs, your heart requires ATP or energy as a fuel source. And in order to create ATP or energy, your heart has to do cellular respiration. Now you should know by this point, a key ingredient in cellular respiration is oxygen. So the purpose of these coronary arteries is to deliver oxygen to the heart tissue itself so the heart can make ATP. If you've heard or known someone having a heart attack before, that's actually when you get clotting or clogging of these arteries so that oxygen can't reach the cardiac muscle itself. And without oxygen, the cardiac muscle starts to die. That's a heart attack. We need to orient ourselves around this heart directionally. So right now, picture that the heart is sitting in the tray like if there was a patient lying in front of me receiving open heart surgery. There is a superior portion of the heart that would be closest to the patient's head, and there's an inferior portion of the heart that would be closer down towards the abdominal cavity. The heart is tucked inside the thoracic cavity, and it is tilted slightly left, which is why the left lung tends to be smaller than the right lung. The inferior most portion of the heart that comes to a point is called the apex, similar to the top of a mountain being referred to as an apex. The superior portion of the heart up here, which is much wider and bigger, is known as the base, also similar to the base of a mountain. So your heart is really like an upside down mountain with the pointed apex down in the inferior or bottom portion and the wide base at the superior or upper portion. One thing to note about the base of the heart is that this is where we are gonna find all of our major blood vessels, like the aorta and the superior vena cava and the pulmonary arteries and veins, which we will discuss later. Another important way we need to be able to orient around this heart is knowing the difference between the front of the sheep heart and the back of the sheep heart, or the anterior portion of the sheep heart and the posterior portion of the sheep heart. So there's three easy ways to determine which side is anterior. The first way I like to determine anterior is by looking at the coronary arteries. When you're looking at the anterior side, the coronary arteries tend to cross over the heart from left to right. So you can see this coronary artery right here. That's one way you can know your anterior. You don't necessarily see the same trend on the back of the heart or the posterior side of the heart. Another easy way to determine anterior versus posterior is if this is anterior here, and this is posterior here, see, so yeah, I promise, that's still anterior right there. Notice how much higher the anterior side comes up on the heart, and notice how much lower the posterior side goes down on the heart. So the anterior side is much higher than the posterior side, which kind of ends like right here. 
One final way to know the difference, and this is the way I think that's the most reliable, is if you look at the apex of the heart, the apex should always be on the left-hand side. So you know you're looking at the front of the heart if the apex is in its rightful place on the left-hand side. Look what happens when we look posterior. Uh-oh, apex is on the right-hand side. So we need that point, we need that apex to be pointing towards the left-hand side, and this is anterior. One final set of directional terms we need to be prepared to understand for this dissection to be successful is right versus left. Now I know this is your right hand and this is your left hand, but as I always tell my anatomy students, you need to be the patient, be the sheep, be the specimen. So if this actually were a patient, laying in front of you, and this was their heart sitting inside their chest, and you were doing open heart surgery. If you were to hold the patient's hand on this side, which hand of the patient would you be holding? Which hand would be in your hand? And that would be their left hand, and their left arm would come out this way. And this would be their right hand and their right arm. You can even move your body and pretend that you are the patient to figure out that this side is the patient or the heart's left side, and this side is the patient or the heart's right side. Let's quickly review. We see coronary arteries crossing the heart that supply blood to the heart itself. Cardiac muscle tissue, which makes up the majority of your heart. Adipose or fat tissue covering the heart as well. You are looking at the anterior portion of the heart. This is posterior and you can tell it's posterior because the apex is going the wrong way. The anterior portion rises hyzer, higher, pardon me, posterior drops down lower and anterior also has those coronary arteries that cross from left to right. This upper portion of the heart is the base with all the blood vessels and down here is the apex or the inferior portion. Lastly, this side of the heart is the left side and this side is right. So for most of your dissection, especially on the external anatomy, you want to have the heart so that superior is away from you, inferior or the apex is closer to your chest. You always wanna have the anterior portion facing up or the front portion facing up, and we're ready to start. So again, ask yourself, what side of the heart is this right here? And hopefully you said left, and this is right. Now remember, your heart has four chambers. So does a sheep's heart. The upper chambers, which would probably be located right around here and right around here, those are the left and right atria. And I always tell my students in a fancy building, the atrium is usually the entrance to the building. So the atria are where blood first enters the heart. The left atrium receives blood from the lungs, lungs to left atrium. The right atrium receives deoxygenated blood from the body coming from the superior and inferior vena cava. Beneath the atria, you are going to find the left and the right ventricle. And an easy way to remember that the ventricles are at the bottom is the heart really is shaped like a V. So the ventricles are the portion that make up the V. Now the ventricles are way bigger than the atria because the atria their job is just to receive the blood and then dump it down into their respective ventricles. The ventricles have the difficult task of pumping that blood out of the heart. Hopefully you can remember the right ventricle pumps blood up to the lungs and the left ventricle pumps blood out the aorta into the entire body, to the top of your heads, all the way down to the tips of your toes. So when we feel the muscle, on the left side and the right side of the heart, I can push my fingers in and feel space on the right side. The left side is super meaty. And that's because the right ventricle only has to pump blood to the lungs. So it is less muscular. The left ventricle is the most muscular and largest chamber of the heart because it has the most complicated job, pumping blood to the entire body through all 60,000 miles of blood vessels. Above each atrium, you will find these little flap-like structures that are only above the atria. So this is our left one, and this is our right one. And these are called the left and the right 
auricles. That word auricle descends from the word for ear. So someone at some point thought that this looked like an ear, and I think I can kind of see it. The auricles are associated with the atria, but they are not the same thing as the atria. These are pouches that when blood enters the atria can increase and stretch out the volume of the left atrium and the right atrium. They are not the same thing as the atria though. Some sources will tell you that they are. These are just pouches that expand the volume of the left atrium and the right atrium. And again, that's the left and the right auricles. Okay, for the rest of the external video, we are gonna focus on the major blood vessels of the heart. And I'll try to identify all of the major blood vessels that you probably should know at this point. The first and easiest to find major blood vessel on the base of the heart, and again, this is still the left side of the heart, this is still the right side, this is the front, this is the back, is this massive blood vessel right here. It's easiest to find because it's the size. It's a huge blood vessel. It's got these thick walls because this is the aorta, which is the largest artery in your body. In a human body, the aorta is actually the width of a garden hose. It's huge. The aorta branches and sends blood out of the heart to all these different places. This pathway that comes off the aorta right here, see how these two blood vessels are connected? This is the brachiocephalic artery. So that's just a branch coming off of the aorta. In front of the aorta, I've got this blood vessel right here. So this is probably the most anterior blood vessel. And if I push my forceps down it, I can feel that I've ended up in the right ventricle. That's because this is the blood vessel that when the right ventricle contracts, blood comes shooting out of it. And if you can picture the anatomy of a heart, this is the pulmonary artery, which is going to send blood out of the heart to the lungs. Now that blood is going to return back to the heart oxygen rich. So here's where we're at. Aorta. This is the pulmonary artery. Really quickly, I can show you where the blood comes back from the lungs. You can see that it dumps blood right in here into the left atrium, oxygen rich blood. And that's because this right here is the pulmonary vein or what's left of the pulmonary vein. Hopefully you have a little bit more blood vessel here than I do. And that just dumps right into the left atrium with that oxygen rich blood. Another blood vessel that you'll need to know are the ones that dump into the right atrium. And there are two of those and we can thankfully see both of them. This one that's a little bit higher, if I push the forceps into it, oh, that's cool. They go right inside the right atrium beneath the auricle this is the superior vena cava. And then beneath it, you're probably not going to be surprised by this name. We have the vein that comes and dumps into the right atrium from the lower body. This is the inferior vena cava. Let's recap those arteries and veins just because they're so complicated. So easiest and biggest one to find. That's going to be the aorta and the brachiocephalic artery that comes off of it. The most anterior blood vessel, if I push the forceps down, I'm in the right ventricle. That means this blood vessel is the pulmonary artery or one of the pulmonary arteries. If we head to the back of the heart, we've got this big opening that dumps into the left atrium. So this is the pulmonary vein where it drops off right here. And then lastly, superior vena cava and behind it, probably the most posterior one, inferior vena cava. One more thing to recap, let's make sure you're good on the chambers. So if I point right here, ask yourself what chamber of the heart would be here. That's going to be the left atrium. What chamber of the heart would be right here? That would be the right ventricle. What chamber of the heart would be right here? Left ventricle and up here, right atrium. Up here at the top of the heart, in addition to the blood vessels, we have this weird looking structure. What is that? That's an auricle and specifically, which auricle is it? It's the left auricle. And over here, we have the right auricle. And again, those just expand the capacity of the left and right atrium.